So, hello everybody. Um, today is an exciting day because I am finally going to get to participate in an experiment with robots that I signed up for a couple weeks ago. And it's going to be cool. I don't know a lot about it, but I'm going to ride over at around 4. I'm going to spend two hours working with robots um, and they're going to be recording me and like looking at how I interact with them. The study is called um, Human Performance for Human Robot Teams. So from what I gather and from what they've told me, I'm going to be wearing sensors on me and, and interacting with robots in some way. I think <laughs> it's hard to really predict what's going to go on, but uh, I'm excited for it. I'm going to go and then I'm going to report back and share <laughs> what it was like. So let's go. I don't get rained on. Forecast seems like it's gonna be fine, but I'm gonna be back a few hours from now, so really no telling if I'm gonna get wet or not. So here I am. I have a lot of sensors on me. Um, it's really cool. I have feet, legs, chest sensor. I got this is an eye tracker. So yeah. Uh, so I just finished. It's all dark now. That was like two hours worth of robot experimentation. I got some video in there. Probably chronologically it'll come before this. But oh my gosh, I didn't get any video of the actual test itself, but I, I will describe it in detail. So I'm gonna ride back and either tonight or tomorrow, I'll go over uh, what I did. Very cool, very cool is all I'm gonna say. Finish up uh, with your robot experiments and ride home on an electric uh, hoverboard. All right, we're living in the future. All right, so as you may be able to tell from a variety of context clues and uh, from me telling you right now, it's not that night, it is two days later but I found the time to kind of go over what exactly I did. And I'm gonna do some illustrations to help, uh, you know, kind of show exactly what I was doing during the simulation. So, I wanna make it clear that I did not actually do any controlling of this robot myself. I was working alongside an artificial intelligence that was helping me run basically like a flight simulator. I was doing like fuel management and there was like a crosshair simulator. And it's actually easier for me to just draw this up. So there were four stations that I was operating. And basically how it worked is for each one, there was, a, there was like a simple task basically that I had to do. So my drawing skills are not great. So this is our crosshair simulation. So one of these, I had to make sure that this crosshair was centered. So I had like a little joystick that I would manipulate <laughs> that drawing. But basically that would keep this centered. And the second one was like supposed to be some readout of something. And basically how it looked is I would have so five and six, and then I would have different like gauges basically that needed to be at certain levels. So periodically these would change. So it would like go up. This is an arrow by the way. So these would move and I would have to adjust based on the numbers what level they were at. The third was like a very, very kind of convoluted fuel system. So basically I had to keep two main fuel tanks full, 
by supplying them from like four different auxiliary tanks that could all feed into one another. So basically, imagine these bottom two tanks right here. These can feed into one another and also the top tanks, which are the, the ones that I was trying to keep balanced. What I would get is I would try to keep these levels right here. Oh, I hope I'm not messing with the microphone when I put this in front. But see these levels of fuel right here needed to be balanced. And I could also exchange between these two. And the final task, this is the one that I was, uh, I had the most trouble with, was basically I had these different radios, right? So I would have a readout. Um, I had four different radio like channels, basically. And how it worked is I had nav one, nav two, mm -hmm. com one, and com two. And these would all be set to different like frequencies, right? So I would get like 11.65, 15.75, 15 22.45, 10.05. And so the difficult part is they actually had a speaker and someone would tell me over the radio like set nav two to whatever frequency and I would have to verbally respond and say like you know NASA 504 set nav two to 15.75 and that is how I locked that in so I think one of the reasons that they had these mini sensors is not just to track my movement but there was also a microphone involved and they could track my eye movement so everything on me um, that was just to basically record, I guess, like a lot, and like, I mean a lot of data. So I wasn't really conscious of those motion detectors. Those were just for the benefit of the experiment. My participation was periodically, I would get like alerts, right, to go monitor these different systems. And how it worked is every once in a while, it would be like a specific manual system that I would have to take over. And then every once in a while, I would hear a chime and uh, I would have to switch stations. So keep in mind, I have these four that I need to manage, but they're not all side by side. So the workstation that I was at, I'm really hoping this is in frame by the way. The workstation that I had was sort of like a, a, a setup like this. So you can imagine, so we have one being the crosshair, two is the gauges, three is fuel, and four is comms. You can imagine if I'm this X right here, every time I would hear this chime, I would have to do basically a switch between these two stations. So I would have to either go from one to four, or I would go from four to one. And these happened like all the time. Like throughout the entire experiment, I don't think I went more than five minutes without a chime telling me to basically like check those stations. So I would be in the middle of something and I'd hear that chime and I would have to decide whether or not I wanted to go walk over to the other station or if I wanted to stay and finish whatever I was doing. Because if, if you imagine, I mean, if you're in the middle of saying, like responding like, oh, this is NASA 504, <laughs> you know, my signal is set to 15.75 or whatever it is, it's not very appealing to go walk around. So this itself was part of the experiment, I assume, to see how I responded to that. But what's interesting is that they ran me through, I think four, they didn't tell me this, but it felt like four different stages of this experiment with the AI taking on a different role in each one. So stage one was almost entirely automated. So I was basically just walking between these two points like constantly. And the machine managing all this was taking care of everything and that was fine. Um, the second phase is I would have a specific manual task to complete 
and then the machine will manage everything else. So that's also pretty manageable. I would be like, you know, doing one task for a while and then that would get automated and I would be told to move to another station. So I did. And that was fine because in isolation, all these activities are very, very straightforward. Um, they do require your full focus, but if, if you've got your entire focus, you've, you've basically got it down with no issues. The issues arose when later in the test, they would have me doing one or even two or three even manual activities at once. And since all of these are equal priority, you either have to abandon your current task to try and address the more urgent uh, situations emerging in other tasks, or you, you just kind of have to stick it out and hope that you're doing the right thing. I went through stage one, two, and three, and then the fourth stage is a really weird kind of combination of things where things would go red, things would need urgent attention, and then by the time that I walked over to address them, the AI would have already taken over. So it was super interesting. I eventually kind of learned not to go address specific stations because I realized that like the AI was taking over at the exact point that I myself would have taken over um, <laughs> in, order, in order to stop whatever issue there was, right? So what does this all mean? What does this all mean? I don't know, honestly. I don't know enough about the experiment to, to draw any meaningful conclusions myself. But that wasn't why I was there. I was just there to be another human in the human robot team. But it was definitely interesting. Uh, in the future, I assume, more people will be working alongside robots. Um, so I, I think it's important research to look into to see how humans react based on what tasks are being done for them by robots and what tasks they need to do themselves. This experiment also went on for like a really long time. And I'm not exaggerating when I say it, it was more than an hour. So my training took 10 minutes and the actual test itself took, I think 50 minutes. Between all the sensors and stuff, I was in there for more than two hours, but it was good. I did enjoy it. And uh, if you're interested, I can send you information to participate if you're you know nearby. I mean, I'm sure they're looking for uh, participants so if, you, if this sounds like something that you might be interested in, don't hesitate to contact me. But I think that's all I've really got for today. I hope you found it interesting. See ya.